Hey, this is David Johnson, running back of the Arizona Cardinals, and you're listening to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast, coming to you from the FantasyJocks.com studios with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Unverified. <laughs> Welcome oh. to the podcast. It is that's Tuesday. A, that's how we're starting the show. I'm sorry. And the honest truth is we already started the show once. And yeah. immediately, right when the show started, our audio went out and we had to restart everything. <laughs> um, but I didn't make the verified joke then, so had to redo it. Is Welcome. anything going on today? Anything special? What is super? It's, Tuesday. It's a Super Tuesday. Oh, November cause 8th. Because of waivers. Because it's waivers day. Yeah. yeah. Super Tuesday. <laughs> super hey, make sure you get out and make your waiver claims. Okay? Vote which guy you want on your team. Yeah. <laughs> Is there any waiver systems in which that's the way you vote? Yeah. <laughs> oh, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm part of the AJ Green party, by the way. Oh. Just so you know. That's <laughs> that's pretty good. That's political I'm gonna, I'm gonna, humor. I think I'm going to join you on that. Yeah. Is this a full political humor show? Is that the... Uh, are we please, doing any... Are, please, is Kate, no. Kate McKinnon is here. <laughs> Come on in, Kate. That'd be oh, great. No, she's not. Welcome to the podcast. We are not going to... Uh, it, w- it won't be political. It'll be uh, It'll be fantasy-oriented. Sportual. Yeah. Uh, was it political that Rex Ryan got... Hosed? Hosed? Hosed by the, the uh, NFL fan, the, the Seahawks fans at the NFL office. He got. Oh. I can't. The Seahawks are always on that end of these deals. Oh, yeah. they, they don't think so. They always show yeah, they how. Are, look at the numbers speak for themselves. Yeah, of the penalties. We, we get more penalties than any other team in the league. It's like, well, that that's also because you commit more. <laughs> like you actually commit more fouls. So that makes sense. Maybe they believe that it's kind of a uh, deductible system, and once you hit your deductible, you can have as many penalties <laughs> as you want. And we have just lost the Upper Northwest. <laughs> yeah. Sorry. It was – that play, that sequence was okay. just insanity. Okay. Here's here's what I hope for a Seattle fan is they can watch – you won. Yeah. You got your victory. But I you have to watch that sequence of event and go – No, they do. Hey, we got away with one They, there. they do. I in, in fairness to Seahawks fans, when I was tweeting out how ridiculous it was, uh, Seahawks fans were saying, hey, I'm a Seahawks fan. We don't get it either. So, I mean, yeah, they're – don't don't blame the fans. Blame the 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 stupid well, the, just uh, Richard, calls. Richard Sherman's quote was, "I didn't do anything wrong. He shouldn't have kicked the ball." That was that was his official response. <laughs> well, it was blaming the kicker for doing his job. Sherman's gonna Sherman, and I still insist he was going for the ball. Sure. So yeah. whatever. Um. All right. Moving on <laughs> to more infor- You know that's not gonna help your fantasy team. I don't own Rex Ryan in any leagues. Um. We used to. Otherwise, I would have gotten a ton of profanity points. <laughs> so today, news and notes. We have our waiver wire segment going to break down the big names this week. This is this is that time of year now where you're talking about when do you spend the big bucks if yeah. you're in a fab system? When do you use that top waiver spot you've been holding on to? We also have full stream ahead, our streaming quarterback options for this week. Look, this these can help. Colin yeah. Kaepernick last week, streaming quarterback option, came out and had a monster game for you, was available on waivers. So we give those today so you can go sign guys on waivers this week. Um, Andrew Luck's on by. Uh, we'll bring up all <laughs> Andrew the Andrew Luck's on hope, waivers. I know. That's what I was <laughs> hoping. I was like, oh, I got to go get him. There's some bigger names on by, and, and so you need to go sign some other players. And um, let's start with a quick question, Mike. You wanted to talk about – some commissioner horror stories well, or what just, did you want to bring up? I just wanted to real quick bring up, we, we talk about join the foot.com, you know, it's it our community. And one of the things we have on there are the foot clan leagues where you're it, people ask us a lot. I want to, in a very committed and educated league, a fun league. And so we have this meeting place set up for people and we are just getting just hundreds of commissioner horror stories. Like yesterday, someone tweeted at the show said, Hey, uh, so what do I do about this? I just said our commissioner, I'm playing against him. We actually had a tie. The tiebreaker was scheduled to be bench points as it often is. And the commissioner, his entire bench was on by. So he changed the system. What? So that now, he- now to, to be clear, this is not 
a commissioner of a Foot Clan no. league. No, this is a non Foot Clan. Correct. League. Okay, good. And we're just we're getting all of these crazy stories of commissioners doing shysty things, changing rules mid season. That ruins a league. So it's uh, that power. It's the, you give somebody a little bit of power. Yeah. If there's one thing you could say on, on election Tuesday. day. <laughs> Is you give somebody a little bit of power and you never know what they're going to do with it because power is addicting. So just just putting it out there that we have we have a meeting place where good good leagues are being formed. Yeah, just throwing it out there. All right, let's go ahead uh, give our Twitter handle out here at the FF Ballers. You can find us over there. Find uh, Jason at Jason FFL. I'm verified. Andy at Andy Holloway, obviously verified. And then Mike at FF Hitman. Is it actually me? Who knows? I, yesterday was one of my favorite days. Officially I mean, yes. not official. Um, no, it, look, shout out the Foot Clan, <laughs> the, the the Twitter my, action that I got yesterday, the 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 uh, parody accounts popping up. No, my favorite moment by far was the person that superimposed your head on a guy with a butterfly net. Oh, who was running through chasing. a field trying to capture <laughs> a verified check mark? Ooh, gonna get my, one. My favorite Twitter action on on the verification thing was the person who was also verified, who tweeted to Andy and said, "Hey, you don't know me, but you know that it is me." <laughs> it's, it's just really great, and and uh, we'll we'll go ahead and give you a daily update on this. I feel Mike like, is still currently not verified. I feel like we need the uh, what is it? It's Law and Order. One of those where it's like dun, dun, dun. Dun. we need still not verified. Yeah, we need we need an update sound. All I'm, right, I'm on it. Head over to the website, thefantasyfootballers.com. That's where you can find all of our weekly rankings, all these uh, incredible articles being uh, released on there each and every day by an awesome staff of writers, stuff that you just can't get anywhere else. Got a new article up about trades. People are frequent. How do I make a good trade? Real good we, article. We got a fantastic article up today. I'm giving you five nice, solid tips and tricks for, also, for getting a trade done. Also, you have a team defense recap up on the site. And you can start looking towards these end of season. I think we're going to do a segment here in the next few days talking about those playoff schedules and playoffs. the guys. Yeah. Talk about playoffs. Playoffs. So, uh, and then what? Tomorrow we're doing keep trade cut. I, I think so. Got a value as show. A, as of right of now, you never know, man. Wednesday's the potpourri day where things just pop up and we have some, some goofy fun. And then uh, before we get into the news, do we have a, anything from last night's Monday night game fantasy-wise? I mean, Russell Wilson had a good game. Tyrod Taylor continues to be an he, every week starter. He is, but you just—it never feels like it. I he, think he's—I think he's pretty good player. He, yeah. Looks, yeah, I think he really is. Yeah, he—he he passed the test last night. He looked good, and I—I I, I just, just imagine them, Sammy Watkins helping that offense. Exactly what? Not just Sammy Watkins, but but other help. I mean, I've always liked Robert Woods. I think he's an okay player. He's a perfect, he looked. He's a perfect great. two man. He but really outside is. Outside of him, yeah, who should be a two. But he ten for one sixty two last night. There so. are no other weapons there that I really believe in that are helping Tyrod Taylor. Tyrod Taylor is helping them so you don't believe in reggie bush i do not well i mean if we're going running back sure lashawn mccoy is great but uh goodwin and and percy harvin and they're digging deep and it's not fantasy related but i cannot recall a game where i saw so i'm gonna call it a mummy catch where you have the guy on the just very sideline who catches it and just falls over oh, like yeah. a sarcophagus because he's got the feet in there must have been six of those. I mean, yeah. it was unbelievable. I was like, the Jimmy like Graham catch the mummy? The oh, mummy was that a top five catch of the year? Ooh, the second touchdown, the, the one hander one back of the end zone. So it good. was. Yeah, I mean, that and was, that he was jumped great. over a person. What is what's I want? It looked a little weak, but he got well, no, over. No, no. Him. What I want to say is, is that a new celebration? The jump spike. Yeah, for wh Jimmy Graham, I've never. I don't recall. Yeah, he has seeing, to do that because he because he can't dunk. He can't dunk it into the. The upright. Well, anymore. I for one, so dumb. Jimmy Graham, uh, you you deserve better than the jump spike. All right, we're gonna take a quick time out here. Uh, I want to get your attention for something uh, far more inf important than football. Um, we have a unique platform here, and uh, a very very good friend of the show. We're we're calling on the Foot Clan to help um, support one of your own in this situation. Uh, we have a very very close friend. His name is Matthew. And uh, he has helped. Uh, we worked with him for many, many years. We are very close friends with him. And he has helped us build parts of the website. 
He's an engineer, a web engineer, and uh, yeah, some of the tools you guys use would not exist without without Matthew. Yeah, and um, very very tragically, um, he lost his wife this past weekend, unexpectedly. He uh, he and his wife uh, were parents to two small boys. So Matt uh, is going to face a future uh, without his wife and with a two year old and four year old, I believe. And um, was also in the middle of job searching when this happened. And so we have uh, taken upon ourselves to go beyond the football here and um, and ask for your help and support in any way possible to help Matthew. Uh, we have set up, uh, there is a GoFundMe set up on his behalf that you can learn more about him and uh, what he is facing. And you can find that. Uh, we linked it from Foot Clan Help dot com that is foot clan help dot com and um he's just a very very dear friend to us and we feel like it, it's important for us to take the opportunity to take a time out here you know we get to talk about football for a living but there are some things that are just so much more important and our hearts are breaking with him and his family and so if you could um he's a he and he's a very good man he's a he's a brother of ours and um, any, anything we can do to help, we will do. And, and we don't usually use, I mean, we've yeah, never done we've never anything had like this before. this before. Um, and, and I hope that we never, uh, do again, but we, we know the foot clan out there is full of good people and, uh, whatever we can do to help him, we can. So if, if you, uh, if you want to see more footclanhelp.com, we would really appreciate it. Matt would appreciate it. And, uh, we can come together for something we, we all agree on. Absolutely. So let's move on to the news. News and notes from around the league. All right, the Titans coach uh, Mike Malarkey suggested Derrick Henry's calf strain could cost him multiple weeks. We uh -oh. talked about the MRI happening yesterday, and, you know, that kind of changed quickly, right? We thought Henry up and coming, the toe injury to Murray. Now, all of a sudden, Murray's got the backfield to himself again. And um, what? And Tony Andrews. Handcuff. <laughs> no, no, I don't think so. Uh, yeah, I wouldn't. I wouldn't make him a handcuff. <laughs> I I do agree that he is the backup. There you go. So, you know, um, if you if you bought Derrick Henry after his big week, or if you're sitting with him on your bench now, you're in a tough situation he, because if you don't own Demarco Murray, I don't know if you can hold on to Henry for what he's done this year. This is the time of year where you need those roster spots. You and do. It's completely team dependent. There are certain teams where if I need to drop Derrick Henry and he's going to miss the next few weeks and I need wins now, then you've got to do what you've got to do. And he is okay to drop in those situations. However, there are other teams that, you know, my, my roster makeup might be kind of more locked into the playoffs and, and I might have a, a strong starting core and, and more bench opportunities. If he's out there, I'm going to pick him up. This is a completely team dependent move uh, because we're getting near the playoffs worth owning, worth dropping was posed a trade question from on Twitter. Uh, my very, very me verified Twitter. Sure. sure. Uh, so they, they, he, this person has dog Martin and Derek Henry. They were proposed a trade by the DeMarco Murray owner who has Jacquez Rogers. Would you at this point trade Derrick Henry for Jacquez? Yep. I mean, you're talking both are both are injured. Jacquez is still in a walking boot. You would you would make the trade, get just get your handcuff. You think that has more value? Yes. I, I agree. I think now with Derrick Henry's injury. Neither one are going to if, be back next week. You, you probably it is still. If early. I do not own, this is just me. If I don't own De, um, Demarco Murray, I don't believe that Derrick Henry should be owned unless you're in unless you're in a dynasty or keeper league. I don't see any reason to roster him. Every other name we're going to mention today, I'd probably rather have on the roster than Derrick Henry missing you three need or four wins weeks. Right now. Because you're going into week ten, right? Mm -hmm. So we're going into week ten. We know that Tennessee has that. By week in week thirteen, I think it is. Yes, Henry probably doesn't see the field till week fourteen, and if he sees the wheel, the field in week fourteen, 
there are the Kenneth Dixons and Paul Perkins and Capri right. Bibbs of and the world. And he's not going to be valuable in week no, 14 unless, unless DeMarco Murray is yeah, out. Yeah, unless DeMarco Murray is out. Exactly. Man, the, just reading, there's a blurb that's I'm talking about Charles Sims coming back. Dirk Cutter expects him back. But it's like, at some point, we're going to get Doug Martin back. We're getting Charles Sims back. We're getting Jacquez Rogers back. The end has just been rough for the Buccaneers. Incoming injury Ooh. for Peyton Barber. Yeah. Oh, man. All right, let's talk about Capri Bibbs. Capri Bibbs. Capri Pants. Um, you guys want – no? Oh, I I thought – pant. I, I'm an idiot. <laughs> I was thinking bibs, and you somehow turned a bib into pants. I's like, there's not. that's not that common, but Capri's got Not it. yet it's not. <laughs> Come on. Capri Bib Pants. All right. Because they're very helpful. Uh, Capri Bibbs could supplant Devontae Booker as the Broncos lead back in Week 10. What, Here's, that, it's elevated to supplants. Eh, I, I buy in. I do. No not. way. Absolutely. No. Let me tell you why. Way. Can, I, can I? Okay. Uh, okay. Here's why. Uh, uh, the reason is, is that Capri Bibbs will start this week, and he will play New Orleans, and he will capitalize on the opportunity, and he will secure the spot. I uh, see. Uh, and and you can make that argument. I would make the other argument. I don't believe he gets the start. I think he gets a little bit more work, but I think the start still goes uh, to the starter, in which case the same thing happens, the right? Like, yes, De Devontae Booker has the same matchup. So what's to say Devontae Booker just doesn't get, you know, a fire lit under him and he looks great. When it comes to the talent of those two individuals, I very much believe Devontae Booker is more talented than Capri Bibbs. That is my uh, view of it. I think Bibbs should be picked up. This is a good waiver right. addition. La look. A Ingram's more talented than Hightower, but last week we were advocating Hightower because of the circumstances. Exactly. Both should be picked up. I think Capri Bibbs could be able to be played. He's not, to me, a must play unless something changes where we know for sure he is the starter, but I think Booker is still the guy to have there. All right. Kill! This is good news. No, it's not. Good, good news. No, no, no. Peterson has admitted Darren Sproles is the lead back. What has he never done before? Admitted that the truth is the truth right and so now what makes you think he's now telling the truth that's it i uh, start ryan matthews no 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 <laughs> no he was uh rising star of the week yesterday for me darren sproles 80 percent of the snaps um clearly if you play this past week get 80 percent, and the coach comes out and says you are the lead back look this this is a full-on the pen is blue Situation no, you're, you're also Doug. no. I'm saying it's Darren Sproles, but just you know we're in the business of giving good advice, right? We can't make a joke Look, about. No, I'm saying Darren Sproles. No, Darren and, Sproles and, is the lead back. What I'm saying is the past few weeks of Doug Peterson just l bold faced lying, saying that Ryan Matthews is. But the main Darren guy. Sproles because this he week, was still the token starter at the time on yeah. the depth chart. He was the token starter. It was an. Yeah, Darren Sproles is the guy. He is he is the guy who's going to be on the field. He's going to be the guy touching the ball, and he faces Atlanta this week. <clears throat> that's a good matchup. There should be a lot of points scored in this game. Um, Darren Sproles, I think, is a very good – it's amazing that he can even still be a pickup. He's owned in 69% of leagues. That means in 30% of leagues he's still available. He is uh, a weekly start at this point. I believe, Doug Peterson, that he is the starter because he's been the starter. Spencer Ware remains in the league's concussion protocol, so we don't know what's happening with him yet. It seems to have taken him a while to get through this, so we'll see if he's available this week. If not, it'll be Charkandrick West. Jeff Fisher admitted oh, this was this story just was unbelievable. He admitted Todd Gurley's not getting enough carries. Mind you, Gurley got 12 rushes, and Case Keenum had 46 passes this past week. You are the head coach, Jeff. <laughs> this is within your power. <laughs> this sounds like but uh, the you, fantasy. This is Andy Reid situation. You remember when I was – getting a bunch of flack for my rant on Jeff Fisher when they were three and one. <laughs> yes, you were. Wait, hey, everybody, you know where are you, where are you at? <laughs> if there's one rule in life, it's that everything returns to the mean. And if there's one rule for Jeff Fisher is that he definitely returns. He, he has a very low mean. Look, you're in control of this team. You're giving your best player 12 rushes and you're giving your worst player 46 passes. Um, your worst player? <laughs> yeah, I've decided. Whoa. <laughs> uh, Todd Gurley. The headline here for fantasy owners is that Todd Gurley cannot be relied upon for premium fantasy football numbers in any way, shape, or form. 
Um, the report came out that the Rams are not planning to change quarterback as long as the postseason is a possibility. So in a couple weeks, maybe they'll make a change. Jets coach Todd Bowles said Ryan Fitzpatrick's knee. He has an MCL injury. He's day-to-day. Bryce Petty will be ready to go if Fitzpatrick can't go. Okay. You excited about that? Yes. If Bryce Petty is starting, even if he's not, the Rams are a great play this week. In You yes. know, the yes. uh, interception prone Fitzpatrick or the backup Bryce Petty. Yes. Trevor Agreed. Simeon will remain the starting quarterback. Alex Smith will return for week 10. And Coach Andy Reid called Jeremy Macklin day-to-day. Could miss more time. Yeah. Um, if he's off the field, does that change the way you feel about Tyreek Hill? No. Not much, no. Travis Kelsey. Yeah, a little maybe, bit more for Kelsey. A little, little a little bit more safety net there. Somebody, you know, if Macklin's not there, you can't get the five for 41 numbers or whatever. Yeah, you, someone needs those 40 yards. They'll <laughs> spread it around evenly, so everyone will go up one Travis, for 10. Travis Kelsey will get five yards. For those of you that started Ty Montgomery, it's important to know he was on a rep count for the Sunday uh, loss to the Colts. <sighs> he looked so, good when he ran the ball. He did. Yeah, he was he was their running back. I mean, that's what he, that's what he was, so... Um, before we move into the waivers, which we're going to do momentarily, we do want to thank today's sponsor. You know, him, pristine auction, pristine auction.com. Look, these guys are the industry leader sports memorabilia on the web, hundreds and hundreds of daily auctions. It is addicting. It is awesome to be able to go on there and just see the different things available from not just the NFL, but from baseball, hockey, basketball, and, uh, extending into media into the movies and those type of things. Incredible uh, memorabilia that has been authenticated, that is uh, completely trustworthy. We are big fans of Pristine Auction and the team there. Um, Mike is uh, single-handedly bought about half of the, the items on there, yeah. I think. Look, I'm on there daily, and this is a perfect place. Look, Christmas is coming up. You want to get a unique gift? Check out pristineauction.com, as I have just gotten... Our, uh, our esteemed host here, a gift that he does not know about. Wait, oh. wait, 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 wait. Did you bring it? I did not. Well, we got to go get it. What? Oh. You got me a gift? I did. Wow. I want to know what it is. You'll, you I guess we'll talk about this tomorrow. Is it an autographed, uh, my Twitter page autographed by <laughs> Twitter or yeah. something? Yeah, something like that. Um, I've just returned your gift. Oh, no. I'm excited. Yeah, so jerk. check out pristineauction.com, P-R-I-S-T-I-N-E auction.com when you make your free account let them know that the fantasy footballers have sent you um i was desperately searching for our waiver wire drop while that entire thing was going on so i found it yay (laughs) put me in coach all right i mean i could have just gone with (laughs) that's the must pick joy bell don't do it all right waiver wires week 10 the bye weeks buffalo Detroit, Indianapolis, Oakland. So you'll be without your Derek Carrs and your Andrew Lux and your Matt Stafford's and your Tyrod Taylor's this week. So we'll have our streaming quarterback segment very soon. Get you some names that you can maybe lean on this week, get a win. Um, Let's start, though, with the wide receiver position. Um, A number of players here that are owned in less than 50% of leagues or right around that mark, whether you're in ESPN or Yahoo!, players that we think are worth owning down the stretch. Steve Smith. He's back, man. Is back on the field. 50% owned. And he had an okay game. He was four for 47. I believe he caught a two-point conversion. Is that true? Yes. Um, He's the guy I'd rather have than Mike Wallace, despite the big Wallace game. He has Cleveland on Thursday night. Oh, and yes, so he does. He's a great pickup to me, and he's somebody that's proven, right? Some of these names um, that could be brought up that had big games like Eli Rogers, you know, he's been hit and miss. I think when Steve Smith's been active, he's been fine to start. Well, he also, you saw the first couple games when he was recovering from the injury, getting back into the groove of things. It, it took a few weeks before, and then he was performing at a very high level. I expect Steve Smith will be back at that level quite soon. Now, Mike, if you like Cole Beasley, you must like Jamison Crowder. I do like Jamison Crowder. Because Jamison Crowder Crowder now, for the fourth consecutive week, was in double digits. For the third consecutive week, or second consecutive week, over 100 yards receiving, scored again against Cincinnati. This was back in week eight, right? Um, So Jamison Crowder 
might have been forgotten about Jameson. on your waiver wire because nobody signed him for week nine. Yeah, Jamison Crowder is a great pickup. Unfortunately, he's not one of those pickups that you're I, – I, I don't think you're going to pick him up looking to start this week against Minnesota. That's – you know the issue but if you can hold on if Maybe. you if you need what if your team is a is a team that man you really need help at wide receivers the the two guys that might be out there are Steve Smith and Jameson Crowder that going forward I expect will bolster your wide receivers in a, in a very good way I, I just don't love the matchup against Minnesota this Yeah week. it's not the best but I mean who's who's on DJ it's got to be Xavier Rhodes right Probably. I mean, Jamison Crowder is the safety yeah, valve. Yeah, Rhodes isn't going to slide into the slot all the time. So, so I just, Crowder is – yeah. Reed and Crowder, I expect them to have – they can have a, a decent game. Now, Mike, explain to me why Sammy Coates might be a good pickup here after his gooser. Well, the gooser was very, very much related to Big Ben recovering from his injury, played horrifying football for three and a half quarters. So, if Sammy Coates is still the big play guy. He's entrenched as that number two. There was at least four or five deep shots to him. Like I said, Big Ben was not on. Coach did drop a touchdown. So he just – he is a – they're going to take those four shots, four big play shots to him every single week. And I think more often than not, they'll get at least one of them. So I, he's a good pickup to me. He's, they're taking on Dallas this weekend. Jason, talk to me about some of your favorite wide receiver pickups, or have we already talked about really the big headliners no, in your opinion? No, I don't think uh, I don't think we have in the sense that most people out there, you know, I, I think a good leagues, you're not going to be able to pick up Steve Smith and Jamison Crowder. But two guys that I think you will be able to pick up, that you will be able to play and they will perform this week, are on the same team. John Brown? John Brown. J.J. Nelson. And J.J. Nelson. Now, John Brown might be owned, but because of the bye week, uh, that we saw a lot of uh, leagues dropping John Brown. J.J. Nelson is almost certainly available coming off of the bye, and he's J.J. Nelson. Announced they, as the starter. He has been announced as the starter. This is uh, Arizona wide receiver. Ahead of people don't know J.J. Nelson. That's fair. Yeah, it's good, good point to point that out. J.J. Nelson, Arizona wide receiver, starting over Michael Floyd. He has been very good. He just is coming off an 8-for-79 and two-touchdown game. And now we're going up against San Francisco. That's a juicy matchup. There should be plenty of, of scoring opportunities there for everyone involved. And I think if you need a spot start, he's a great guy to look at. Also, another spot start. Rashad Matthews, I, I'm just throwing him out there. Rashad Matthews is Andy's a, good, favorite. a good wide receiver <laughs> uh, what? in general. Oh, this was me saying – I said I would not sign him. Yes. It's hard to trust any Titans oh, yeah, wide I wouldn't, receiver. No, what you're giving poor advice. No, against Green Bay, I, I expect Rashard Matthews to be able to have a, a fine game. I will, I will bet you anything you want on okay. Rashard Matthews. Okay. I think he will be a wide receiver three. You're saying he will not be a wide receiver three. <laughs> oh, that's, Water bet. That's a terrible bet. For who? For you. Why? He's been he's been in double digits or at nine points in for five weeks for five straight weeks and he plays Green Bay. I think it's a safe. That's bet a pretty good bet for Richard Matthews to be a wide receiver three. Touchdown dependent. Mm, if no. the, if I was going to pick a game where he gets a touchdown, this would be near the top of the list. All right, I'm willing to make the bet. We'll come back. We'll circle around. Uh, did we need to talk about any bets from last week? I mean, I feel like we made some. Did we? On the show, let me let me double check this because, um, oh, Tavon we versus we Britt. <laughs> Tavon versus Britt. Kenny Britt. It's got to be forty nine and a touchdown. The touchdown uh -oh. is going to be what puts uh -oh. him over the top. Yeah, you want to talk about bets more? That's uh, that's another one I won. Uh, did you look up Tavon Austin? Did he have any secret touchdowns? <laughs> you didn't. You didn't win that bet because you weren't in the bet. What? That was me and Andy. Kenny Britt? Yeah. I'm always on the Kenny I Britt side. Didn't, didn't I tell you I wanted to include return yards <laughs> in, in the bet? Um, probably still lost. Uh, uh, some other names to throw out there. Uh, Marquise Lee had a good game, four for 84. You know, he's getting targeted pretty regularly, deeper leagues. Will Fuller, you know, he's day-to-day. -day. Some people might drop him this week because they're tired of it. He's somebody you could pick up for down the stretch. Eli Rogers had the big game. I'm not really... You know, in a PPR league, well, that's I'd be okay with Eli Rogers. That's a monitor news situation where if Dar Darius Hayward Bay is going to miss time, I think Eli Rogers 
role will grow. I, I completely agree. Similar to that, Sterling Shepard should be talked about. Yeah. Because if Victor Cruz is out, he's worth picking up. What about Robert Woods after the 10 for 162 performance going on to the bye? Bye week. He was only owned in 15% of leagues, probably be down to 10% ownership. Um, I would. He's right not the now. type of guy that I think you need to hold on to through a buy. Would you rather have long term? Would you rather have Rashard Matthews or Robert Woods? Ooh, that's a good question. Robert Woods, Eli Rogers, or Robert Woods? Robert Woods. Okay. Let's talk about the uh, prime position. We're talking about the running backs, and uh, we know down the stretch, the more depth that you can have at the running back position, the better off your team is going to be. You never know when a Derrick Henry injury is going to take place. You never know when uh, the next Tampa Bay starting running back goes down. And so the, the yeah, more you do, cause it's this it's week, this, it's always yeah. this week, the more, the more insurance you have, the better. So let's talk about some of the guys available. All right. Well, we we've talked about him for the last several weeks, uh, but James Starks is getting closer to return. He returned to limited practice this last week. I think that he gets on the field this week. That's a little too early to know ironclad, that's just a guess right now. It, the, the, the arrow's pointing towards it. He's trending towards starting. I think he starts this week. Do you guys believe that with the return of Starks, you'll see a, a complete elimination of Montgomery in the backfield? I don't. I think you're going to see Starks and Montgomery splitting the RB reps. What What's going to end up happening, I feel, is you won't see Montgomery's role change all that much as far as total carries. He was only getting, I think he got like eight carries last week. He'll probably get another eight carries, but what we're not going to see is Aaron Rodgers throwing the ball 70 times a game. Um, we're going to see them actually try to have a running game with a running back. Go figure. They're going to have one, hopefully, with James Starks back. is not the best matchup against Tennessee, but RBs are always slim pickings. Similar to James Starks, though, a guy who's been injured coming back that I'm way more excited about would be Deion Lewis. So what do you guys think? or expect from Dion Lewis? I, I, I don't know. I, I mean, I wish I could look into my crystal ball, but Belichick has covered it with some sort of uh, hoodie. <laughs> He's thrown it over the, the crystal ball, and I can't see it because Belichick is tough, man. I, I've i talked about the fact that I didn't see James White being ushered into the corner the second Lewis is back on the field. I mean, you've got a guy coming back from injury, by the way, twice, right? I mean, he had the major injury last year then you thought he was going to be ready for the beginning of the season, and, and he wasn't. And now he's coming back again against Seattle. I expect nothing from him this week, yeah. fantasy-wise. But I, I, agree I, do see, I do see a, uh, a teeny bit of the crystal ball, and there's a chance that because of the way James White's been utilized and played lately, that Lewis could end up helping fantasy owners quite a bit down the stretch. Yeah, I would agree with that. He's a, he is a must-pickup. For me, but there is no way I'm playing. It's him interesting. This week. He is thirty percent owned in ESPN, forty percent in Yahoo. So there are a lot of you that have just kind of held on to him, tucked him away, hidden him away, and you're waiting for him to come back out and uh, perform. Now, two guys we mentioned on the show yesterday that I want to talk about are Kenneth Dixon and Paul Perkins. Now, Kenneth Dixon and Perkins, uh, Perkins being you know the Giants running back Dixon from Baltimore. Neither of them are heavily owned. And both of them seem to have an opportunity to potentially usurp their starters. Um, Perkins with Rashad Jennings in New York and Kenneth Dixon with Terrence West in Baltimore. Now, you both said yesterday you think Dixon would be a better signing. Yeah. Why is that? It just Baltimore is a better team. They have a better offensive line. So the opportunity, if Kenneth Dixon is the starter, let's say if all things being equal, you have Kenneth Dixon and Paul Perkins both getting 15 touches. Sure. I'd rather have Kenneth Dixon, but that's just, both of them I think are are worth picking up and stashing at this point. So Perkins had 11 carries last week, so we think both of those guys are worth the flyer. Like we said, the running back position, very thin. You need to grab some guys. Let's talk about um, Peyton Barber. Let's say you can't move on without talking Peyton Barber. So Peyton Barber is the guy in Tampa. Anton Smith by default out for the year. Very Josh, not Josh, talked about enough. Yeah, it was, like I, that was that's what I'm saying. It was weird. I watched the game. He went down. It looked catastrophic. The news came out, and people just weren't. It didn't really get picked up. But so Anton Smith is out. Doug Martin still not practicing. There was there was hopeful words from Dirk Cutter last week that thought that Martin might be able to be back this week, but he's still not practicing. Jock Quiz is still in a walking boot. 
it's going to be Peyton Barber against the Chicago Bears, and that's a pretty good matchup for a running back, and it might be all Peyton Barber. You Who's even there? It's Peyton Barber and, and Mike James, so it's going to be the Peyton Barber show. What if Carlos Hyde doesn't return this week? Dewan Harris is still available in a lot of leagues, but he has Arizona in Arizona. Do you I, believe that Dewan Harris is a start-worthy running back for Week 10? Yeah, I yeah. think uh, I, I do. I mean, you temper the expectations because of the good matchup, but you've seen Dewan Harris. He made most of his hay in the passing game. Exactly, and and I think that you, you're going to have – Arizona has always struggled with running quarterbacks. Um, there's the opportunity there for Dewan Harris to, to have some big chunk yardage on broken plays here or there, as, as we've seen him do already. If he is the starter, if Carlos Hyde is out, I think he would be an, an, an all right play. And I know we already, we already brought him up, but I'm going to go back and just say, I think that the, the waiver pickup for me, like I look at this week and I think it's pretty sparse and you might need a start and you might need someone a little bit longer term. For me, I, I actually think Capri Bibbs might be, despite me saying that he's not going to take over and disagreeing with you, I think that that would be the guy I would be making my claim on. He's the highest upside potential, in my opinion, on the waiver wire. Because of the matchup with New Orleans, you can start him even in a backup role. So you don't have to be sure that he's taking that over. I think exactly. you, you have the opportunity to start him with that potential that he becomes the guy. Now, I just don't think he's talented enough to be the guy, but opportunity makes opportunity is more important than talent yep. for the running back position. And and let's be clear here. The reason there's an opportunity for Capri Bibbs is not because of one 69-yard run. It's because of the very inefficient play of Devontae Booker in the last game. I believe he was something like 11 for 22, did some things that Gary Kubiak did not like. And as we know, I don't think any of us believe Rob Kelly is more talented than Matt Jones. I don't think we believe that Tim Hightower is more talented than Mark Ingram. But if you do some things your coach doesn't like, opportunities open up for your backups. And speaking of backups, let's talk about some handcuffs well, and some handcuffs. Before you jump into handcuff, Rob Kelly, the yeah. the news was Jay Gruden has I said. I haven't categorized as, uh, what, like, a, is that a maturing handcuff? Yeah, well, Jay Gruden has said that Matt Jones will have to earn his way back onto the field that Rob Kelly is viewed at least as of right now as the team's early down running back. So that means Matt Jones is probably a pretty good hand. <laughs> <laughs> Unavailable one. But uh, yeah. right. Unfortunately, Rob Kelly takes on Minnesota this week. So Jones gets the job back next week. Yeah, that's possibly, what, but so he's, he's a pickup. Who are the must own handcuffs going down the stretch? The guys that come to mind as the premium targets. If you are, you know, if you've listened to us long enough, you know our thoughts on handcuffing in the draft. You don't do it, really, right. right? You don't use those roster spots. But we've talked about as you get down to the end of the season, as all these injuries take place. Super important. Super important to have the premium handcuffs that mean – because if you lock these guys up, you have somebody to start. I mean, and a player that will produce for you in the playoffs. Every week on the waiver show, there's usually that guy that's like, oh, you got to pick him up because the starter got injured. And, and in half of the leagues out there, you go, oh, he was already picked up last week. That's the goal. That's the goal with these handcuffs is pick the guy up before they go. For me, the number one guy is Alfred Morris. Alfred Morris, behind that Dallas Cowboys line, he would be a, a regular plug-and-play top five running back for fantasy uh, should Ezekiel Elliott go out or possibly get, you know, there's still the whirlwinds of some possible suspension. I don't expect that to happen. But – we know he would get it done there, so he's the guy I would want the most. Yep. Him. D'Angelo Williams has to be right with him. Absolutely. Yes. Because we have a history now, two consecutive years, of Le'Veon Bell's injuries at the end of the season. D'Angelo Williams ensures your team has a top-tier running back. We've seen D-Will without Lev Bell. What are some other names? What's crazy to me is, so D-Will, I agree, he's owned in about half of leagues um, on ESPN and Yahoo, but Alfred Morris is still – only owned in 15% of leagues in ESPN and 13% for Yahoo. I he should get be it. owned in 100% of leagues by the Ezekiel Elliott owner. Yeah, and, and but if you're if if he's on waivers and I'm not the Ezekiel owner, unless I just have unless my bench is stacked, I want a flyer. You know, I look, you can't play Alfred Morris. You can play in a pinch Bilal Powell. But I would rather have Alfred Morris than Bilal Powell 
on on my bench because the upside it, should their starters go out is is higher for last year the most owned player on championship rosters was tim hightower exactly so if you took a chance and grabbed him and you stashed him away and we've seen this before we've had it happen last year in our league of record every sunday morning uh one of the owners would throw a random handcuff almost not random but a, a wisely selected handcuff on his bench just in case that week the injury happened d'angelo williams ended up on his team he could ride D'Angelo Williams for several weeks. It's a smart and prudent move. And that's why the decision you're making as a fantasy owner comes down to the upside of an Alfred Morris, or do you go sign a ho-hum type of guy to just sit there? Right. I mean, that's that. I'd rather have the upside because that'll win you your league. Yeah, I mean, it, we, we talked earlier about Paul Perkins, for instance. Paul Perkins right now is in a timeshare, and we hope he gets a little bit more work. Should Rashad Jennings be completely injured, then Paul Perkins probably has plug and play start ability. But what's for his, sure. for but what's sure. his upside? I consider him in that category. You so you I, Dick, I guess for Dixon, me I just Dixon and Perkins, these guys that are young with the opportunity, I mean yeah, they're not a great running team, but that has something to do with the it's, players running the ball. Especially if they can catch the ball. Yeah. I mean, that, yeah. And Paul Perkins can catch. So other guys, real quick, uh Mike Gillisley. Yes. So if you're a shady owner, you know you know the story. You know the dance. Uh, shady runs, then he gets tackled, then he limps around, and then he goes back to the back of the uh, huddle. Uh, Bilal Powell for Matt Forte owners needs yep. to be owned. And um, you know I, we talked about Dixon and Perkins. Is there any other guys you want to bring bring up, or do we want to move on to tight ends? Um. No, I'm not going to say Ronnie Hillman. Not going to do it. <laughs> oh, he looked okay. I know. He, I think he might he be the be best running back. He looked yeah. better than he Asiata. Looked, he looked better than McKinnon. Uh, yeah, he did. I don't, uh, so, uh, Cameron Artis Payne is a, a decent You have to guy. own him if you're if you're Stewart Jonathan owner. Stewart. All right. Uh, um, but other than that, I mean. Slim yeah, Pickens. Maybe Alfred Blue. Yeah. <laughs> I, I love Michael I, Keaton. I wouldn't own <laughs> Alfred Blue. <laughs> Tight end pickups this week. He had some good performances from Eric Ebron again. He's pretty well owned. Seven for 92. Hopefully you picked him up last week as an option if you didn't have one of those elite tight ends. Cameron Brait scored again. He's all right. I mean, that's that's my best description for Cameron Brait. He's okay. <laughs> but here's the thing that separates a great tight end and a not great tight end is can they crap your team? And, and you know, Brait can crap your team very easily. You Most know, of these guys can. You want to know a guy who can. I, I guess he can crap your team because all tight ends can, and, and he certainly did this last week. The guy that only got two for 14, but I would be willing to pick him up and play him this week, would be Dennis Pitta. Dennis Pitta has still been very involved in the passing game. They didn't need him a lot. This last game game script against Pittsburgh, they got up to that 21 to nothing lead, and it was it was just kind of a different game because of, uh, in part, that Mike Wallace 95-yard touchdown that took an offensive drive away, gave them points. Dennis Pitta before that, four receptions, six receptions, seven receptions. This week plays against Cleveland, who we've talked about it before. They've given up over 100 yards more to the tight end than the second place. They are the worst of the worst. This last week, we saw Jason Witten go for 11, 147, and 2 against them. So I think Dennis Pitta is a is a, I agree. Is a fine pickup for a week. Yeah, CJ Fedorowicz, he's back. Don't forget about it. Bye yeah, week. He was on the bye week. He has certainly been heating up, despite Brock Osweiler being a, a bucket of ice, trying to douse his flames, trying to put him down. Uh, Lance Kendricks yeah. has been getting it done the last couple of weeks. Seven for ninety and a dropped touchdown. Unbelievable drop <laughs> touchdown. And the Jacob Tammy still not practicing, which puts Austin Hooper in play to stream against Philadelphia. All right, some streaming defense options for this week. Some guys, uh, some teams that you like. You know, the Ravens take on the Browns on Thursday. Delightful. That one jumps out at you right away. I think you can play both sides of the Jets Rams game. Yep, I you know you can play the Jets versus the Rams, or there's you can gonna, play the Rams versus the Jets. I think there's going to be a lot of scoring in this game defense, by the defense. By the defenses, so which <laughs> might hurt your defense. We we don't know. This is going to be a, a a nasty game. What do you think about starting the Washington defense against the struggling Vikings? I don't mind it. No, I mean certainly that the, offensive line is the worst. Yeah, the Vikings are are a team that you look to target um, for a defense playing against them. You All right, are we going to talk quarterbacks now? 
Let's do it. Full stream ahead. All right. I, I'm going to kick this one off with my streaming quarterback option because he plays before your two guys do. Okay. He plays on Thursday. And we're talking about Joe Cool. Joe Flacco versus Cleveland on Thursday night football. Um, I think some 49er fans might be sad that I disparaged the memory of Joe, <laughs> Joe Montana there by calling Joe Flacco Joe Cool. Well, Joe, but he's going to be Joe Cool against look, Cleveland Joe this week. Joe Cool is Snoopy. All right, the OG, yeah. yeah. Um, look, we talked about Steve Smith's back. Mike Wallace had a big game. But the, the real storyline here is I, I'm not going to make a case for the, the Ravens offense being the greatest thing in the world. I'm going to make a case for the Cleveland defense being the worst thing in the world. They've given up three touchdowns to quarterbacks in five of the last seven games. Oh, my. They ha there's not been one game this season they haven't given up a quarterback uh, touchdown to a quarterback. So you have this baseline that's built in with Joe Flacco. And you got a whole ton of upside with the amount of three touchdown games they've given up. They are porous, to say the least. And I think you're going to just watch Joe Flacco take advantage of matchups for Dennis Pitta, for Steve Smith, for Mike Wallace. Um, I, I'm very curious to see the the usage level in this game as an aside of Dixon and West. Yes. But but uh, Joe Flacco, streaming quarterback of the week. The, the nice thing we've seen on, on that matchup is some matchups you go, okay, this is great for the quarterback, but bad for the running backs, or, you know, or, or vice versa. Everyone just eats. It's good Every, for everyone. It's good for all. Come to the table. You, you don't have to worry about, well, what if what if the running backs get touchdowns? Oh, oh they oh they will. <laughs> oh, they will. Uh, the Cleveland Joe Browns are like a fantasy football golden corral. <laughs> Yes. Oh, that's great. All Fantasy right. Fantasy football golden corral. <laughs> I'll, I'll kick it off next. Oh. Uh, Grab your Febreze. You know who's not on blast this week? <laughs> Jay, Jay Cutty's Cut mom. <laughs> Jay Cutty's mom's not on blast this week because I am picking Jay Cutler as my stream of the week. He hasn't done much for fantasy production. He hasn't this played year. much. He hasn't played. Exactly. He's only played in. He's only played and finished two games. Uh, they were against Houston with J.J. Watt on the road. Great, you know, defense to open the year. And Minnesota last week, which he looked pretty good. 252 yards and a touchdown. No turnovers against Minnesota. That that level, 250 and one, it's not going to get it done for your, you know, it's not crapping your team completely, but that's not a great fantasy game. But that's against Minnesota. Now he's had the bye week. He's getting a little healthier with that, that offhand. And he plays on the road against Tampa Bay. Uh, he's got plenty of weapons now with Alshon Jeffrey, hopefully arrested up Eddie Royal, Cameron Meredith, uh, Zach Miller. I think this is a game where you're going to get 250 and two from Jay Cutler and should the, uh, you know, I, I, I think Chicago's defense is okay and they might be able to hold Tampa Bay a little lower. That's where I'm expecting that 250 and two, but should Tampa Bay catch fire and this game become a shootout, which could happen then, you know, Jay Cutler has a uh, uh, high upside with a decent floor. Speaking of shootouts, I'm throwing out Trevor Simeon. He's taken on the Saints. We're talking a 49-point over-under from the wise guys in Vegas. Denver's defense right now is susceptible. There are many injuries. You have Aqib Tlaib who may be out. You have Derek Wolf now dealing with, uh, with a hairline fracture of some kind. Last week, Simeon against the Oakland Raiders, 283-2. and two. That's fine. I'll take that every single day of the week. And so Trevor Simeon against the Saints, I think this there is an opportunity for him to have a good to great game. Uh, on, on In that game, do you sit the Denver Broncos defense this week? I certainly consider it. Yeah, I, I yeah. think you probably I do, think, right? Yeah, you don't want to box yourself into this. I have to start them every week when you've got a matchup like this. So um, let me uh, – before we close out the show, I want to give you guys a couple of uh, – opportunities here to play a little game with me. I want I want to see if you guys can guess who was the target leader this past week. Ooh, the, oh, in the NFL? In the NFL. Uh, what was Jason the, Witten? <laughs> um, no. No. Ooh. Why? Well, oh wait, it's Greg Olson, right? Uh <laughs> no. No, I this, no, I disagree. <laughs> it is Greg Olson. No, who are the who was the target? Give give me uh give me the top 3. Like give me some names that might be in the top 3 of targets. Oh, man. Well, you usually yeah. usual suspects of Antonio Brown. Brown, Brown had eight, 11 and he was number eight. Julio was uh, number seven. Mike Evans. Mike Evans was the oh, target oh, leader. Of course. On that 17 targets. You forget the Thursday games. Um, Stefan Diggs, 14 targets. 
Yeah, what, and then he had twelve receptions. Robert or so, Woods right? at number at thirteen targets. Robert Woods. Um, touch leaders, touch leaders on the week. Melvin Gordon. Oh, for sure. Thirty six touches, thirty two of them rushes. Jay Ajayi, twenty seven touches was number two, and Lashawn McCoy with twenty five touches was uh, was number three there. So, and much to what you said earlier, Sammy Coates. Sammy Coates left the most yards on the field. When yeah. you look at opportunity for yards. Uh, 133, and actually Jordy Nelson had 157, but Coach was right there with him, Marvin Jones yeah. as well. Melvin Gordon, owners, Kenneth Farrow would be your backup. If if your running back is going to touch the ball 36 times a game, I'm going to have his backup on my team. Yeah, yeah. All right, that does it for today's episode of the show. Again, I, I want to thank you guys for uh, supporting this show, but more so um, uh, we want to just encourage you to go check out that URL we gave to you earlier which was footclanhelp.com footclanhelp.com and go support a friend of the show somebody that has contributed to the show and needs help right now so check out footclanhelp.com and we will be with you tomorrow so we certainly will have a um happy healthy calm election day everybody (laughs) yes please stay safe stay safe (laughs) see you later the purge is coming and don't forget fantasyjocks.com for all your trophy needs footballers for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FFBallers.